As of today, Russia has unofficially lost in this war. And one of the reasons why this happened, it is because they indirectly acknowledged that it was them who attacked the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. In addition to that, Ukrainian partisans continue to take out Russian infiltrators, which reduces the chances of these separation referendums close to zero. And finally, since we already know how obsessed Russia with having the last word in everything, according to some intelligence data from Ukraine, something extremely bad that is about to happen on August 24th. But more about all of this in a couple of minutes. What's up, Inessers? It's the Russian dude. And let's begin by looking at the map of the war updates from the east. First of all, as you can see from this video, Russian forces were shelling this small city of Kurahove. Unfortunately, as a result of these attacks, several civilian buildings were damaged. Next, we go to Korlivka. And as you can see from this video, a factory is on fire. At this very moment, there are no direct confirmations who is behind this attack, but most likely Russians were using the territory of this factory as their military headquarters and Ukrainians basically destroyed it. This night, to the north of Donetsk, Russians tried to advance next to Verkhnakaminskaya, but Ukrainians were able to resist this attack. But unfortunately, if we move a little bit to the south, you can see that Russians were able to advance closer to Bakhmut. And as you can see from uh, this video, there is heavy fighting in this contested area. A little bit more to the south, Russians tried to advance closer to Kodema, but Ukrainians resisted these attacks as well. And finally, Russians had relative success advancing closer to Nova Bakhmutovka and to this small village of Piski. And before we talk about Ukrainian partisans taking out another Russian infiltrator in the east, here are just a couple of words about Kramatorsk. As you can see from this video, Russians were shelling this city this night and approximately 20 civilian houses in this small neighborhood have been partially damaged. Alright, and now let's talk about this Russian infiltrator. His name was Elijah. Chef Askar, and according to several reports, Ukrainian partisans blew up his car with him inside. This is not the first and definitely not the last Russian infiltrator who falls to the hands of Ukrainian partisans. And the major importance of events like this is that this potentially prevents these separation referendums in the future. Which basically means that as soon as Russia loses in this war, they will have absolutely nothing to present to its citizens. Very soon I'll be talking about today's statement that Russia practically already unofficially lost in this war, but before this just a couple of words from Kharkov. And as you can see from this video, Russians were once again shelling this city. Alright, and now let's go to the south. And while I'm doing this, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. As you can see from this video, these are completely burned down fields in Kherson region. And if we move a little bit to the east, here we can see the video from Nova Kahovka. And the locals of this city report that Ukrainians once again attacked this bridge, which at this very moment is pretty much the last remaining major bridge in the south. And then right here we have a picture of a civilian neighborhood in Marhanets, which has been destroyed by Russians. And by the way, if you want to see more footage like this, especially the one which I was not able to use in today's episode, please consider checking my Patreon. All the proceeds will be donated to Ukraine and you can find all the useful links down below. Ok, and right before we talk about Russians indirectly confirming that it was them who was attacking the territory of a nuclear power plant, here is just one last quick picture from Zaporozhye. And as you can see right here, there were at least three Russian missiles which reached their final destinations. Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about something that Russians probably shouldn't have said. And the thing I'm talking about here is the situation around the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. So, if you remember, for the last several days, there was several missile attacks against the territory of this plant. Russia obviously blamed Ukraine for these attacks and they even invited International Atomic Energy Agency to visit this plant. What Russia thought would happen is that the rest of the world will see that Russia has nothing to hide. And they kinda did not expect that this invitation will actually go through. Because today Ukraine also invited this agency to visit the nuclear power plant. But Ukraine also said that they have two conditions in case this visit is about to happen. First of all, both Russia 
and Ukraine must not have any demands for this agency and not interfere with its investigation. And second is that both countries must remove its military personnel and military vehicles from the territory of this power plant. Which if you think about it absolutely makes sense. If you want fair and square investigation, just let them do their work uninterrupted. But at the same time, Russian representative to the United Nations, Vasily Nibenzia, who was always saying, come here and look what Ukrainians are doing. Now when this is actually happening, he is saying, but how? We cannot remove our military vehicles. What if Ukrainians invade this plant? I mean, <laughs> you get the idea. Russia definitely did not expect that the agency might actually come. And now they're like, okay, so what should we do now? And at the same time, the ex-president of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, was making extremely critical threats about this situation. What he literally said is that you should not forget that there are other nuclear power stations in Europe and, you know, accidents happen. I mean, <laughs> how can you claim that you're the protector of Europe and in the very next sentence you threaten to destroy the entire continent? And even Alexei Aristovich himself, he says that at this very moment this nuclear power plant is in the center of the world's attention. That is why he does not think that Russia will bomb it right now. And at the same time, you can never forget these two things. First of all is that the majority of Russian military officials, they never think even two steps ahead. And second is this recently acquired problem of smoking in inappropriate places. And as a result of Russia making these statements and basically being caught in a lie by the entire world, Alexei Aristovich thinks that this country has already unofficially lost. But at the same time, we all know how much Russia is obsessed with symbolism and having the last word in everything. That is why, according to Alexei Danilov, who is the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, he says that according to his intelligence, Russia is preparing a huge and probably final provocation this August 24th. The reason why this date was selected, it is because it is Independence Day in Ukraine. And according to his information, maybe something as severe as assassination attempt against Zelensky might be performed. Which, to be honest, confirms once and for all that even Russia acknowledged its defeat. Because just think about it. They were not able to prevent NATO from extending its borders. They were not able to liberate several regions in Ukraine. Because of Ukrainian party and elimination of Russian infiltrators, most likely they will not be able to do the separation referendums. And now, when the whole world caught Russia in a lie, the very last thing they want to do to at least put a period in this war for them is to try and kill Zelensky. Which, based on their experience with failures, is not going to happen. Welcome to another episode of Ridiculous Russian Propaganda. And today we have this video of Russian patriot who is harassing Ukrainians in Austria. I mean, if you love Russia so much, what are you doing in Europe? But anyways, she is approaching Ukrainians and taunts them by saying things like Ukraine will lose, Zaporozhye, Kherson, Luhansk, Donetsk is the territory of Russia. What she basically thinks is a funny thing to do and then she is stupid enough to put these things on the social media. This video got viral very quick and she got severely punished. And if you want to know what happened with her, please consider joining my Discord. And in addition to that, if you want to support my work, please consider becoming my channel member. All the useful links can be found down below. Thank you so much for your attention, stay safe and see you on Monday with a very special episode.